Hi everyone, my name is Yim Bum Koo, and I'm an undergraduate at Kai's Mathematics Department. Today, I'm presenting our work, Incremental Loss to Scrap Summarization. It is obvious that we are living in the era of big data. These large-scale graphs are still getting larger and larger and even at this moment. One thing we should notice is, most of these data are interconnected. This type of data can be represented by a graph which consists of nodes and edges. Nodes correspond to objects of our interest, and edges correspond to relationship between these objects. For example, massive branch network in Facebook or LinkedIn may be well understood in this way. Nodes are users, and edge between two nodes is given if two users are a friend. Even for an email network, a graph can represent who sent emails to whom. Not only for these examples, graphs can be used across many domains such as www, whose site, whom network, and even protein-protein network in biology. However, dealing with these large-scale graphs as they are without any further manipulation requires heavy disk or network I uses depending on where the input graph is located. To tackle this issue, one of the promising approaches is to represent them as compactly as possible because efficient manipulation on them is possible by using its compact representation. The main advantage is, through compression, a larger portion of original graphs can be stored in main memory or cache. Because data in main memory or cache can be accessed and processed much faster, we have faster graph algorithms and efficient handling of large data. Actually, many graph compression algorithms have been, have been proposed. For example, relabeling those techniques pattern mining, and loss to scrap summarization. Among them, we focus on one of the most effective compression techniques, that is loss to scrap summarization. This approach is a batch algorithm designed for static graphs. The static graphs mean a single snapshot of evolving graphs. However, one concern we might have is, most real-world graphs are even at this moment still changing. The users have just signed up in Facebook or delete their accounts, and two users have just been connected by accepting a friend request, or a couple has just broke up. In fact, real-world graphs are gaining, gaining in size. For example, for the last decade, the number of users in Facebook had jumped from 2 million to 2 billion. Unfortunately, current graph compression algorithms are not able to handle these changes in graphs. That means, in order to make compressed graph reflect the changes, this batch algorithm should be executed again from scratch. Our solution to address this issue is to incrementally update compressed graphs really fast while maintaining good compression performance compared to state-of-art batch algorithms. Before moving on to technical parts, let's take a look at basic notions and terminology used in the presentation. To begin with, what is a lossless graph summarization? Here is a simple illustration for the concept. Suppose we have a toy graph like this. We need 10 edges to describe the graph. Obvious redundancy in describing the graph is relations between this single blue node and four green nodes. How can you really leave out this redundancy? The solution is to view the connection between the blue and green nodes as a single but high level connection between these two color groups. Furthermore, we feel like the four red nodes are close to a near click, which means almost all pairs of nodes are joined by an edge. Let's tentatively add an edge between node I and F. Before grouping the red nodes, an edge between node A and node F is quite an obstacle, so at this time, tentatively delay them at the edge AF. Finally, we can express the complete graph as a self-loop of the red group. To describe the compressed graph, we only need two thick edges, one addition edge and one deletion edge, which adds up to four edges in total. We compress the input graph in the lossless manner as illustrated. This process named as lossless graph summarization aims to minimize the description cost for the graph. To this end, it results in a summary graph and edge corrections. Specifically, lossless graph summarization attempts to minimize the edge count or description cost defined as the total number of edges in the upper graphs. This objective function was proposed in a previous study based on the minimum description length principle. The first one, summer graph, consists of super nodes and super edges, and the summer graph gives the rough description of connectivity of the original graph. A super node is simply a set of nodes, 
and the set of shipper nodes forms a partition of vertices in the original graph. A shipper edge is simply an edge between two shipper nodes. The second one, edge corrections, consists of two residual graphs for addition and deletion of edges. They correct some errors in, induced by the raw description through the summer graph by adding or deleting edges. Here's some notation for the presentation. We especially use S sub u to denote the shipper node containing the u. From now on, we denote an undirected edge simply by concatenating two nodes like u v. All edges in the original graph between two shipper nodes are denoted as a set EAB, and TAB denotes all possible edges between two shipper nodes. The neighborhood of node U is a set of all instant nodes to the node U, and such a node is called a neighbor. Nodes instant to node U in two residual graphs C plus and C minus are denoted as C plus U and C minus U. And finally, the, the compression rate is defined as the ratio of the description code to the number of edges in the original graph. One thing you should note is, in illustrious summarization, all we need to carry is determine shipper nodes, because we can simply determine whether using a shipper edge between two shipper nodes is actually helpful for a description cost. Basically, original edges between two shipper nodes can be described by either using a shipper node with some error edges corrected by C- or only using C+. For former, we need 1 plus TAB minus EAB edges in total. The 1 comes from a super edge, and TAB minus EAB comes from C minus. For the latter, the description cost is obviously EAB. Hence, when the former cost is larger, we better only use C plus, and when the latter cost is larger, we better use a super edge with C minus residual graph. For the toy graph, we should use a super edge between super A and B, because Using the shipper edge only needs one edge, while using C plus needs four edges. However, we have to only use C plus residual graphs between shipper node A and C, because using only C plus needs one edge, while using a shipper edge and deleting three edges leads to four edges in total. Actually, if one uses C plus edges between shipper nodes A and B instead of shipper edge AB, the description cost is larger than before. While this procedure can summarize the graph, we call it lossless, basically because we can fully recover the original graph from the compressed graphs. Recovery can be done by simply following the opposite direction of the summarization. First, we translate super edges into original edges, that is, add all possible edges between distinct nodes in two super nodes. Second, we correct some errors from this roughly rough, dis rough translation by deleting edges in C- minus, but adding edges in plus. Among many graph compression techniques, what makes the lossless graph summarizer stand out? In fact, it has many desired properties. First of all, it's capable of retrieving the neighborhood of a query node. This queryability is a key part for most graph algorithms such as DFS, PageRank, and Dijkstra algorithm. Furthermore, the retrieval can be done rapidly from the compressed graph. The next cool thing is, since the output representations still consist of graph, so we can further compress them by using other compression techniques. Before we formulate our problem, we need a concept to address fully dynamic graphs. In this work, we formulate it as a sequence of edge additions and deletions, where the endpoints of a new edges may be unseen until now. The dynamic graph at time t is given by colliding edges changes until time t. For illustration, at the very beginning, when t is 0, we start with an empty graph. As time goes on, more edge changes are accumulated until time t, and we construct the graph at time t by collecting all edges that are not removed until the moment. As long as changes arrive, a dynamic graph keeps evolving over time. Now let's formulate a problem. When you are given a fully dynamic graph stream at every single moment, we want to retain a summary graph and edge corrections of the graph at time t while minimizing the size of output representation. So when you have the output representation and edge change just arrives, we would like to update the output representation while minimizing the description cost. At this point, we have some obvious challenges. For an incremental algorithm to be meaningful in its own right, it is desirable to have fast update time of the output representation while maintaining good performance compared to state-of-art batch algorithms. 
our proposed master model successfully addresses these challenges. It has almost constant update time regardless of the current size of graphs, and shows comparable compression ratios with the best batch algorithms. Now let's see how we tackle these problems. In order to explain our basic approach, we illustrate the op representation in more descriptive way. Now a new edge has just arrived. If we just put the edges in C++ register graph, then the description cost increased by 1. At this point, how to update the current summarization without compressing the new graph from scratch? Our approach is remarkably simple. Just try to attempt to move some nodes into other super nodes. Then we would get a different partition of nodes. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the optimal encoding for the new partition of nodes should be different. Hence, under the new encoding, we accept the super node of nodes if the description code decreases, otherwise reject the change. We call such nodes under these triers as testing nodes and the super node which are enlarged by moving nodes from other super nodes as candidates. Finally, we call one attempt on a node as testing. At this point, we do not make just random attempts on testing nodes and candidates. Our algorithm finds good testing nodes whose move is likely to give us a decrease in the cost and also propose good candidates for testing nodes as well. Suppose we set this yellow node as testing node and propose the green shipper nodes as candidates. After moving the yellow node into the green shipper node, we no longer need the edge in the C++ register graph. So the description code decreases by 1, and you accept this testing. Now let's move on to the more technical parts. As seen until now, our approach consists of two steps. Set testing nodes, and find candidate. The first part is mainly concerned with execution time, and the second part has to do with compression rates of the algorithm. For the first part, we focused on sampling testing nodes without full recovery from current representation, and reducing redundant testing. For the second part, we make use of an incremental coarse clustering and encourage the organization of super nodes by a simple method. These two steps are repeated on selected testing nodes. Most are required two parameter, sample number and escape probability, which are introduced in detail later. When it retains a summary graph and edge correction at time t, and is given an edge change being either addition or deletion, it returns an updated summary graph with edge corrections. When an edge UV has just arrived, nodes around the edge UV are more likely affected, and it's reasonable to focus on the neighborhoods of two nodes U and V. When sampling testing nodes from the neighborhood, we may need to retrieve all neighbors from the current summary graph and edge corrections, which usually takes the average degree of the graph. However, this is deadly to scalability of the algorithm, because the graphic densification law says that the average, deg average degree of the real growth graphs increase over time. To deal with this issue, we devise an unbiased sampling method without full retrieval of neighborhoods. We use a Markov chain Monte Carlo method and it's called MCMC for short. The MCMC method enables us to create samples from a target random variable even when you only have a function proportional to its probability density. Now we have C testing nodes, and do we test all the sample nodes? No, we better not. If we do so, testing will be to concentrate on high degree nodes because the probability that a node is sample is proportional to degree of the nodes. However, upon testing on a high degree node, updating the optimal encoding and computing the change in the description codes are computationally too heavy because it has so many neighbors. Our approach to tackle the problem is to actually test the testing node with probability 1 over the degree of the node. As the chance of being tested is inverse of the degree, we are more likely to avoid expensive testing on high degree nodes. In addition, the probability of being tested is the same across all nodes in expectation. In other words, we can smooth imbalance in how frequent each node is under testing. Once the testing node is given, now we should propose a good candidate for the testing node. But we have so many choices, how do we know good candidates? Our approach is to leverage on incremental coarse clustering. What we want from the clustering is nodes with similar connectivity belong in the same cluster. Uh, as a side note, any incremental coarse clustering with this property can be employed. We especially use the mean hashing algorithm for the following two reasons. First, it's fast and has theoretically proven desired property. 
it is guaranteed that the probability that two nodes are in the same cluster is proportional to the jacquard similarity of the neighborhoods of two nodes, where jacquard similarity of two sets measures how similar two sets are. In addition, current cluster group by mean hassing can be updated really quick in response to edge changes. So far, we seem to address apparent issues, but we spot an underlying obstacle to achieving good performance. In this way, moving nodes into another supernode only decreases or maintains the number of supernodes. So in the long run, it's less likely to be able to reorganize the supernode for better compression. Hence, instead of always finding a candidate for the testing node, we inject flexibility of partition nodes by separating the testing node as a new singleton supernode with some fixed probability. We empirically observed that this particular move leads to significant improvement in performance. As similar to before, uh, we accept or reject this separation depending on the change of the description cost. Now let's move on experiment result and muscle. We perform experiments on 10 real-world graphs up to 0.3 billion edges. We use dataset coming from web graphs, social graphs such as YouTube, Facebook, and LiveJournal, collaboration graphs, and email graph as well. For competitors of MOSO, we use batch lossless graphs on origin algorithm, randomized, SHS, as WAG. Also, we compare MOSO with, with its variant, MOSO greedy, MOSO MCMC, and MOSO simple. We use them as baseline incremental algorithms. Uh, when an UV is inserted or deleted, most greedy moves the UMV so that the objective is minimized. Most simple is just most so without a coarse clustering. We skip the details about most MCMC. Uh, if you want to find more about the baselines, please check out our paper. First, we measure the runtime of all baseline and our algorithms. Uh, compared to the fastest batch algorithm, SHS, our algorithm also processed each change up to seven orders of magnitude faster on both instruction only and fully dynamic drop streams. Also, most process each change up to two orders of magnitude faster than the streaming baselines. Next, we measure the compression ratio of each algorithm in order to demonstrate its effectiveness. To our surprise, the compression ratio of MOSO was even comparable to that of the best batch algorithm swag. This trend also appears in all data that we have. In addition, this extensive experiment illustrated most of wins over the other streaming baseline in terms of the compression ratio as well. Last, we measured the accumulated exaction time of most in an insertion-only graph stream and a fully dynamic graph stream in order to analyze how fast the runtime of most grows as the size of input graph also grows. In both environments, the accumulated runtime most almost linearly increases, which implies most of the process is change in near, in near constant time. So let's wrap up the presentation. We propose MOSO, the first algorithm for the incremental low stress graph summarization, and we empirically and theoretically show that MOSO has separate strengths. First, MOSO is fast and anytime. It updates its low stress summary up to seven orders of magnitude faster than the fastest batch algorithm. And MOSO is effective. Its compression ratio is comparable to that of the state of arch batch algorithm. Also, most is scalable. It successfully summarizes a fully dynamic graph with up to 0.3 billion edges and updates in near constant time, regardless of, so of the size of the input graph. For reproducibility, we release the code and dataset in the following link. Thanks for attending our talk.